The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we love to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, we're up 11, no, 12 points on the S&P cash, uh, 37 on the Dow, NASDAQ's up 42, Russell's up 12. And I think if there's any story out here today, since I don't think a lot happened, uh, the story I'm looking at is the absolute abject lack of uh, any energy as we go higher. Only 3.6 billion shares by the CBOE volume uh, 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 summary today. And man, we should be doing at this level four and a half. Five billion shares. So this is, uh, and yesterday too was was, yesterday was poor. This is on the edge of ridiculous. I think everybody's pushing the market up, uh, making a, an assumption that there will be uh, a uh, spike in the market to uh, go after the or on the uh, trade deal or an announcement of a trade deal, and everybody wants to be there and everybody wants to sell it as soon as the spike comes. And I have a feeling that they'll be a little disappointed because if everybody's thinking the same way, generally it's already in the market. Uh, other things going on, we talked about uh, the housing market down here in Florida, which tends to lay, uh, lead the rest of America. Um, and uh, I think you know, it was a year ago, about half of the houses down here uh, had to reduce their uh, asking price. Uh, for sales, that's gone to about 80%, uh, both in the bigger markets of uh, Miami and Tampa, not so much Orlando. Uh, so I saw that a little bit, and I thought, okay, that's going to be kind of interesting. But more interesting to me is who was hating on uh, and what were they hating yesterday in the stock market? And what do you think? Do you think that they were shorting? Tesla, or maybe shorting Boeing, or maybe shorting something else. Um, well, it's a little bit different. It's a it's a bit what you would think weird, but I'll show it to you here. I normally put it in every day in my daily newsletter. Let's zoom in here. But on the S and P 500, the most shorted stocks yesterday were Polte. And D.H. Horton, and maybe that tells you something about what the thinking is, at least in the in the uh, in the uh, markets. Uh, but um, I guess they're not the the ones that the Toll Brothers at the very high end. Maybe that's not being affected. But certainly, looking at those two, uh, very much affected. Uh, Netflix normally on the list, which is kind of funny. Um, but uh, the one that always uh, is uh, weird to me is Apple. And we talked about this for the last couple of weeks as Apple went higher. But people continue to have this on the most, what I call the most hated list, which is which ones that everybody hates the most. Generally, if they hate them a lot and they're on this list, they don't go down. That's because uh, everybody knows there's a lot of shorts that are um, almost always the weakest hand in any room. Uh, they're 10 times more likely than a long position uh, to actually trade in a day. So people don't have much uh, uh, tolerance for higher prices when they're short. And when I see stuff like Apple still on the list of highly shorted stocks, I think we got to ask the sanity of people that are shorting Apple. And what's the reason? They got $250 billion. They can buy back those shares at any time, run all these shorts, and I don't, I can't 
guarantee you that that's not what they're doing right this minute. But it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, I want to find, if I'm shorting stocks, I want to find stocks uh, that need cash, that have a real business uh, problem. Now, can Apple go lower? Certainly can, and it has. But I want to find uh, loose bricks in the building that these guys have. And Apple, could it pull back? Yes. Is it going out of business in 10 years? No. If they if they didn't sell anything, they'd still be in business in 10 years. Generally, you want to look for stocks uh, that have problems. Somebody brought up the uh, in the den earlier in the day, Wayfair, and it's kind of interesting to watch stocks that are vastly overpriced, uh, like Wayfair. But doesn't mean that they can't get incredibly more overpriced. Uh, and we'll look at that chart today too. I think we were, it was a seven days to cover or something. And it wasn't that the uh, overall uh, short were that bad to give you seven days to cover, which means on the average volume, it would take seven days just for the shorts to get out. If no longs bought whatsoever, and you know that's not going to happen. But uh, you got to think, you know, what is pe or what are people thinking? Uh, certainly, you know, I brought up, you know, they say don't be short uh, a quiet market. And light volume is particularly painful to shorts because normally they won't hold lo long enough for the market to flip and head lower. But this is uh, kind of a very interesting day with a lot of uh, highly shorted stocks that aren't in there. I mean, a lot of these things like Twitter, everybody knows eventually Twitter has got some major uh, business issues. They don't have that much cash. They do have some. They do make money. Kind of better to find stocks that, you know, they were making money and somebody came in a new product that, you know, cuts them off at the knees. Uh, but again, uh, very weird stuff. Normally, um, <clears throat> when you see something like this with the two housing stocks leading uh, the most uh, hated. A lot of times that's actually a low in the market because uh, it just can't go anymore. But yesterday, 35% of, uh, of all shares started uh, in the trade as a short position. You don't know how many people went home that day short, but you know that a lot of people did. Advanced micro devices also hated. Hated, they say. Twitter, uh, Netflix, Echo Lab, Fortnite. Um, F5 Networks, 25% yesterday. Kohl's, uh, Apache Corporation, Constellation Brands, Hess Corporation. Um, Wynn Resorts, kind of interesting to see that one. Uh, catching the ire of the shorts, microchip technology, Checkpoint Software, JB Hunt Transportation, 21%. Anyway, we'll be back. We'll do a little bit of history, and then we will get on with the business of looking at lots of interesting and succulent charts. Yes, succulent is the word of the day. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. On this day in 1859, naturalist Charles Darwin sends his publishers the first three chapters of The Origin of Species, which will become one of the most influential books ever published. Knowing the fates of scientists who had uh, published radical theories, been ostracized or worse, Darwin held off publishing his theory of natural selection for years. He secretly developed his theory during two decades of surreptitious research following the return from a five-year voyage to the South America on the HMS Beagle as the ship's unpaid botanist. Um, if you've not ever seen it, I don't know why it didn't do well. It's actually an excellent movie. Uh, Master and Commander, kind of, uh, if you ever get to watch it, he's kind of supposed to be the guy that's uh, the doctor on the ship. But, uh, uh, it's not quite, not true history. Uh, inspired by a true story, not even somewhat a true story, just inspired by one. Uh, excellent movie, though, especially if you love yachting and ships. I wouldn't like going out there going that slow in a big tow, uh, in a big boat like that, just kind of bouncing around a great deal. But man, nice. But of course, from now on, people would actually have to do science. They'd yell and scream. They'd sell the, uh, say that the Earth was flat. And by the way, people that email me, the people that say the earth are flat are not real. They're trolls. They're just there to make you think that other people are there. And they love to see your responses when you think you're superior because you believe that they actually believe that the earth is flat. They don't. There are many places around you kind of before the internet uh, there was a thing called usenet where you could post messages and it was it was uh, there's a guy named tom uh uh, uh tom henry yeah. henry phil henry he used to uh, have a radio show down here in florida went national and all he would do uh was uh actually uh he could mimic all the callers and no one actually calling in was real. He, they were all people he made up. He did voices. 
And of course, he'd always have some kind of uh, insane idea and people would call up and get all uh, mad and flustered. That's basically what these guys do. Don't pay too much attention to what people say on the internet. A lot of those people are just there to rile you up. And when I make fun of the flat earthers, it's because I think that they think that you're having a good time watching your blood pressure go higher. They really don't believe it. Anyway, on this day in 1959, uh, we're going to go uh, start looking through some charts today. As I said, a volume just horrifically light. Uh, not a lot of signals. Again, we're looking for any kind of dip, uh, but there hasn't been that yet. Uh, and, you know, we're just up to this level where I think a lot of people are thinking that they want to plant their flag short at 2,900 on the S&P cash. Uh, but I don't know if uh, we are quite there yet. I think at a minimum we need to pull back uh, to take a run at higher prices. I would not be surprised to see a lot of, uh, of uh, selling before we go into the close too, uh, as the volume has been so poor. Market just looks like they've been holding it up for a while. In any case, we're going to go through as many stocks as we can to take a look, and we will continue on higher. Uh, okay, so what do we have? Um, XPO. Well, you know, Oh, boy, the sneezes are back, folks. XPO Logistics. Uh, XPO is the symbol on this one. Uh, and this is exactly what you're looking for uh, in seeing a top in a stock. And that is no volume as you come back and fill something. On the 15th of February, XPO came down with 19 plus million shares. Uh, we're up on about 1.3 million shares right now. Uh, it got to 59.80. Could it go a little higher? maybe opens up on Monday a little higher, but yeah, I mean, we're talking extremely thin markets. So uh, just don't be sure, uh, don't be surprised if that gaps down on Monday uh, or the entire market starts rolling lower to see that some of those uh, retract the last $5, uh, like in this stock, almost instantaneously. Uh, at 1 p.m., let's turn all this off here. Uh, at 1 p.m., uh, do I want that? No. Uh, we had the uh, rig survey come out from Baker Hughes, and what it showed was a massive amount of new wells coming back on. As we said, this is the time when the winter-summer gasoline formula change comes on, and almost all these wells get turned off. Uh, they get service, and, of course, it makes gasoline and uh, crude a little bit tight. Um, almost everybody just decides to build a little bit of supply, uh, but, of course, because there's not uh, nothing come in, it's pretty much standardly bullish. Unfortunately, as soon as they start turning those wells back on, that changes, and it doesn't change overnight. But uh, my guess is that by next Wednesday, we're probably going to see some kind of high in the energy stocks for a while. We also saw news out that the uh, Department of Interior is going to change uh, the way that uh, water uh, purity or water tests can be done uh, state by state instead of doing them nationally, especially for those states that do a lot of oil production. Uh, that uh, don't want the same level of those that do zero oil production. So that should uh, mean that we get a little bit more oil production going down the line. Now, like I said, doesn't instantly change, but we had so many put on that you've got to watch that if we get numbers that are a little weak on Tuesday night from the API that I suspect we probably will be through some kind of high uh, in this at least short-term sector. Uh, with uh, crude in the 62s, I suspect we could actually see, well, let me check it, as, uh, so I don't tell you wrong. 
6296 is the last quote I see. I would not be surprised to see it come back to 58 fairly quickly in the next two weeks or maybe even a week. Uh, when it does start to break, I think that's what you're going to have. You're going to have uh, somewhere between 63 almost, I would imagine, in a handful of days back to 62, uh, 58. I think that's probably where short-term support comes in. Uh, what else do we have going on out here? UTX, we'll take a look at it. Of course, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Someone lost my chart. I've got it. It's right here. We'll get it back up. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then and head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, we've got our first question here, which is, uh, what do you think about the money uh, call options in the VIX that expired six or more months. Um, to, to, to. We have it. Um, yeah, I don't. 
uh, I'd look at them, but I, my guess is that they're way too expensive uh, to get any that are six months along. You're better off to do 30 days at a time uh, on the out of the monies. Um, yeah, if you, the problem is they're so ludicrously expensive uh, that you're almost better off taking a, a plunge in something else. Um, but you know what? That would be it. I would think, yeah, I, I just don't see how you're going to ever make money. Let me put it that way. It's just they're going to be so ludicrously expensive as to be that. And, of course, the decay on them is absolutely nightmarish. Um, you have to be right in about two weeks on the VIX, maybe three weeks. Now, that's about as far as you can go out without them getting so expensive that it doesn't make any sense. One of the other things you can do is buy puts and calls on the UVXY2, which is sometimes a much better value than trying to uh, pick up something on the VIX itself. Uh, and that's generally what I do. But uh, you know, I guess we can look at it real quick. UVXY, see what it's doing here. Uh, doo -doo -doo, okay. So you got a lower low out here with light volume. Yeah, uh, my guess is it's going to consolidate out here. But again, you got no signals on this market yet to actually pull the trigger either way. So why you, you know that this thing is kind of hanging up here at the highs. We're up nine points on the S&P cash, by the way. Up uh, 22 on the Dow and 35 on the NASDAQ. Russell's up 13. Uh, but the, the Russell's leading the market again makes me suspect that the market actually has uh, got kind of a whiff that this trade deal is not going to be instantaneous, although many people think that they're all going to sell the high when it hits that uh, hit that high. Um, let's see what else is out here that I wanted to look at. That's about it. Um, yeah, I, I normally buy puts and calls on the UVXY. Uh, and then, you know, try to get them out of the money. That seems to be the best bang for the buck if you're going to be right on those. Question, uh, what are your thoughts on the complexity of life, especially with codes inside the cell? My background with electronics or for Sperry. Um, if DNA information is the epitome uh, that can control the information, a wonderful blah, blah, blah. Uh Not to mention the nano machine. Nah, 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 nah. What's the place of the very first cell without this complexity? So would have not functioned. That's not actually true. There are um, a lot of uh, fossilized uh, animals that had very little in the way of DNA. And um, so, yeah, w would they be something we recognized as something important today? The answer is no. But they slowly and randomly uh, did come to fruition. Uh, probably one of the best examples of why this eventually works out uh, is the odds against winning uh, the uh, a big state lottery like Texas are uh, hundreds of million to one, and some lady has actually won it four times. Even though it's it's hundreds of millions to one, people, uh, humans especially, have a very bad uh, feeling on the way uh, or uh, intuition on the way statistics actually works out in the long term. And it's just that. There were a lot of long shots that through hundreds of millions a year um, actually eventually paid off. There was a lady that won uh, the state lottery in Texas four times. Uh, and any statistical view of that would be impossible, but it's happened. So uh, don't be surprised over hundreds of millions of years if we have a few people like that lady that eventually run the table uh, in the giant DNA um, casino. That's what it is, kind of a DNA casino. Uh, at least that's the way I've had it explained to me. Uh, okay, my router bits are in, so I'm happy about that. Let's go ahead and look at something else. You still have plenty of time. Give me a call at 877-927-6648. Um, we looked at UTX. Did I bring that up? 
Yeah, we did. Let's look at TCO and see on that. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, T, oh, we're looking at uh, AT&T. Another one coming up to its gap. Uh, AT&T gap down with 118 million shares on October 24th. That gap's left open. Last time you tried it with 45 million shares on December 4th. Tried to get into it on January 8th, didn't get there. Now, yesterday you had 28 million shares. Today, 22.6 million shares. As you go back in to that 118 million share high, as you slowly chew through it. And again, just not real uh, big sign of strength. Doesn't mean that you should short it. It does mean that you should really keep an eye on all these stocks because this is when they can actually flip uh, back on you fairly quickly. And uh, what do we have here? I've got something that's not updating. Let me do this. Let's start over. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Let's take a look at this. Okay. I'm playing with a new version here. I guess I should go back to my old version. How much time I got? Just a minute and a half. Let's find one here that we want to look at. Yeah. Doesn't look like that's the one we want to look at. Let me go ahead and do this just before the break. Get this one back up. Okay, we'll go back to this, turn those off, and go ahead. Okay, Ross stores. What I wanted to look at before we go to the end of the the break. Um, this is coming back into this right shoulder all the way down from November 9th back down to, what is that, about the 19th. Uh, we've been kind of, you kind of cruised for a couple of months around that level at about 93, 94. Uh, broke through it yesterday with 2 million shares. And again, most of the days that you were coming down were on about 4 or 5 million shares. Now, today is what I'm talking about. 2 million shares yesterday. Right now, you're doing about 1.35 million shares. My guess is you get about 1.6. And these candles on the way down, 5.8 million shares, 4.7 million shares. This going to have huge amounts of resistance for every penny higher than most of these stocks. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, 
educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. Um, let's check in with Mr. Market. Up 9.8 on the S&P cash. And again, probably the most interesting thing uh, today is that we still have not broken 4 billion shares uh, in the entire market at the NASDAQ and the NYSE. Uh, just a hair underneath it as we go into my last segment. Normally, we're pushing 4.5 to Five, even on a sat, uh, even on a Friday, so very light. Again, you can got plenty of time to give me a call at eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Email me at path at tfnn dot com, and of course, uh, you can always leave a message in the den. Uh, question to go back and look at Sunoco. We talked about that last couple of days. You spiked the high again today of one point one million shares from February fourteenth. Uh, this is uh, the April 5th high, well, today, all day, actually, with just 170,000 shares. So it gives you an idea that there just isn't really any appetite for higher prices right now. Doesn't mean that we're rolling over instantly. We haven't gotten that signal. But certainly, as I look at a lot of stocks, there just isn't any volume. Well, Site One Landscape Supply, SITE, 400,000 shares on January 9th. At 59.48, we went through that today, and like I said, uh, just very light volume, what, 110,000 shares so far. Uh, let's go through some of these other ones. Sherwin-Williams, SHW, going through its February 20th high. Of course, they're selling paint for all those new houses. So what do you want? You want 500,000 shares? Survey says... 218,000 so far today. Uh, what else do we have? RS, which is Reliance Steel, uh, actually been one of the stronger ones out here, getting back up into his high. A little doji out here, but just no volume the last three days. Uh, 455,000 shares two days ago yesterday, 312,000 shares today, hardly breaking 100,000 shares. Uh, we talked about Ross stores, and uh, this breaking through uh, the previous high of 4.4 million shares today with 1.4 million so far. Also going into a candle that had 4.7 million shares on the way down. So again, just very quiet. We did this like a month ago, and the market kind of dipped for a handful of days, and that's what it took uh, to get the market going higher again. I suspect uh, that at minimum, that's what we're probably looking at, and a maximum maybe a longer-term pullback. Uh, Pet IQ had a nice spike with one and a half million shares on January 16th. Symbol is P E T Q. Uh, very light volume, 460 yesterday, 200,000 shares today, 126,000 shares. As I said, I mean, there just isn't any real juice here. Now, it doesn't mean that we can't get it to, uh, on Monday, but if we don't, this is getting off along in the tooth for no volume. Uh, what do you have? May 11th, Pegasus Systems, 
PEGA, 67.89 for the high that day, 1.3 million shares. As we look in the last handful of days, uh, two days ago, 417,000 shares. Yesterday, 400,000 shares. Today, 91,000 shares. So this is where you have to be very worried if both you're short and or if you're long. They can push it on light volume maybe a little bit more than you can stand. And, of course, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back can actually be over uh, almost instantaneously. Okay, we got that one, we got that one, got that one. Uh, NXP semiconductors. Um, we'll look at the SMHs directly after this. February 25th, $98.20, 4.8 million shares. Uh, yesterday, you had 2.9 million shares. Today, 1.6 million shares as you test that February 25th high. Let's take a quick look at the SMHs. Again, we hadn't seen that signal. But man, you don't like to see this. Uh, back at $112 on June 7th of last year at 112, we hit that today. You had almost 10 million, 9.3 million shares uh, against uh, 3.2 so far this day. Yeah. Now you did have kind of 9 million shares a couple of days ago, kind of spiked that, went sideways. So you're back up today now, which is a lot of these stocks. They just you want they want to run right up to the top, and as soon as they get there, all the volume falls out. Doesn't mean that they've sold off yet, but it does mean that uh, it's more of a flip of a coin than prudent speculation, as far as the traders' part, at least in my opinion. Maxim Integrated Products (MXIM) the symbol uh, six or five point six million shares back on December third, got to fifty seven dollars twenty seven cents. Tried to hit that a couple of times on very light volume. Now we're looking at 3 million shares two days ago, 1.2 million shares yesterday. We get to this high, less than 500,000 shares today. Morgan Stanley also testing its previous high, $45.11 with 30 million shares on January 16th. Hit that today. Are we talking half the volume? No, we're talking a whole lot less. We're talking about 5.2 million shares so far against 30 million shares on that island reversal going back to January 16th. Mickey Doodles went to town riding on a railroad. I forgot that song now. Yeah, I'll, I'll remember it. Uh, what do we have on Mickey Doodles? November 29th. 189 and 72 cents, 4.6 million shares. Tried to get into it with equal volume and really did a reversal that day on January 25th. Got into it again on the first of this month with a reversal, only about 3 million shares. Now we're back up into this with 1.4 million shares today. Now here's what I'm saying you really need to start watching because this is how highs are made. And generally, they don't instantly just fail. But normally, what you get is this light volume move. You get a little bit of a pullback, not one that gives you much of a signal. You go back up one more time, and boom, um, they pull the carpet or the rug pull out. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? Let's get off this. Uh, back up, Kennedy Wilson Holdings, KW, the kilowatt company, um, with about a million shares on July 10th of last year. 1.2 million shares on August 2nd in this $22 range, uh, up with uh, 288,000 shares yesterday, 1.4, uh, 141,000, excuse me, today. And I probably could have had 40 or 50 more of these easy. Uh, I just ran out of time this morning as I was going through stocks. But there are a lot of these, and they're all kind of doing the same thing as they did last month before we had that little hiccup. And then the market picked back up to run higher. Uh, November 8th, 2 million shares on a gap down in Jack Henry's. Sells nice jackets for the employed, which is not me. Happily unemployed. Oh, 21 years. No, 20 years. Yeah, in October. We'll be back in a minute.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien. Ryan, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And of course, uh, an extremely quiet and low volume market today. We've just now kicked over four billion shares on the CBOE volume equities summary. If you want to link to that page, uh, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, we were doing Jack Henry's. Let's go to one that's more of the canary in the coal mine, which is international paper. Um, banging up against this 40, I mean, high 47s. December 3rd, 4768, 4 million shares. Got into it with 4 million shares on February 20th, but couldn't hold it. Pulled back to 4372. On March 25th, we're back up. We had 3 million shares a couple of days ago. Uh, not much yesterday. Today, kind of pushing up on 1.7 million shares so far. So no real signal yet. That's what I'm saying. We're kind of a few days out. I just don't see a great deal to be had in a lot of these. Risk-reward looks kind of poor at the moment. Guidewire software, a lot of the uh, software stocks in the software ETFs rolled over over the last couple of days. Um, Guidewire going up against this uh, 6.4 million share uh, March 7th high, yeah, 6.4 million shares two days ago, 1 million shares yesterday, uh, 1.6 million shares today, a little doji, 445,000 shares. So risk is really starting to up on a handful of these. Um, and Etsy. Yeah, kind of looking like it would be ready to pull back to about 
$60, in which case that may be uh, one of the better looking buys out here. Comes back on lighter volume. In the meantime, we're going to uh, be a guest on Tom O'Brien's show at 3.30 today. We've got lots of interesting topics. We're going to talk about a lot about wireless charging and the, uh, uh, the issue with Apple and others and uh, Amazon. And I think everybody's in this pie. It's, and it's one of the pies, that's, or pies or stews. It's got everything thrown in it. We'll be able to talk a lot about a lot of different things. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We will see you Monday. Same bat channel, same bat 